adding more actions. Today we're gonna create a few new actions that will affect the grid. And here is the list. Adding new tiles, removing tiles, change the tiles height, and change the tile type. So let's get to it. In Unreal, we're gonna start with the action to add a tile to our grid. So I'm gonna go in my player action for the grid right here, and I'm gonna create my new action. And I'm actually just going to duplicate the action that we created in the previous video. So Control W on the action select tile to duplicate it. And I'm going to rename it action underscore add tile. And then I can open the blueprint. In here, the first thing I'm gonna do is go in my event graph and delete the undestroyed event, like so, because we don't wanna re-execute this action when we are destroying the action itself. And then I'm gonna go in my execute action function and I'm just going to delete everything that's in there. And for the logic of the function, it's actually pretty simple. We just wanna check if the tile already exists in the grid, and if it's not the case, we wanna add it. But we actually need to add the two new functions in the grid to be able to do that. So I'm just gonna go back in entry, go in my core grid and open BP grid. And here I'm creating a new function on the left. I named the function is index valid because it's the function that's going to check in the grid data to see if the index is already there. As input, I'm passing it the index that we wanna check, which is an end point, and I'm returning a boolean to tell us if the index is valid or not. And here in the top right corner, I also checked the pure checkbox. And for the logic of the function, it's pretty simple. We just take our grid tiles and we simply check if the index is part of them. And we return the result right here. And now for the second function that we're gonna need, it's actually a function that returns us the scale of the tiles. Because if you remember, if I go back in my spawn grid function right here, we already have a function that tells us the location of the tile based on the grid index. And we also have a function that tells us the rotation of the tile. But we don't have a function for the scale, it's only right here. So we're just gonna collapse this into a function so we don't have to duplicate that code here and there. So we're selecting the nodes, right click on them, and click on collapse to function. I renamed my function get tile scale. I also renamed the output parameter for tile scale, and I made sure to check the pure checkbox. And that's everything we needed to add into the grid so we can compile and save it and go back into the action. And here, the first thing we're gonna do is call the new function we just created, so is index valid with the grid index. And if it's valid, it means that the tile already exists, so we don't wanna add a new one. So I'm just gonna reverse it right here just so it's more clear. And then we pass it to the branch. So right now, if the branch here is true, it means that the tile doesn't exist and we want to add a new one. And we can simply do that by calling the add grid tile function. We can pass it the index, the tile type is gonna be normal, and for the transform, we're gonna split it. So right click, split struct pin. For the location, we're simply gonna call the get tile location from grid index function that is inside the grid, passing it the index. We can do the same thing for the rotation with the get tile rotation from the grid index. And finally, for the scale, we just have to call the new function we just created, so get tile scale right here, and we pass it into the scale. And since it's a new tile and we don't have any states for it right now, we can simply leave it empty. And that's it, that's everything we needed to do for the action to add a tile, so we can just compile and save it. And it's now time to test it, so I'm just going to go back in entry, go in my debug menu, in my tabs, and open the tab grid widget. Here I'm simply going to duplicate the button that we created for the action select tile. And then I change the text so it's written add tile instead of select tile. And for the left click action, I'm selecting the new class we just created, so action add tile. And that's it, we can now compile and save, go back in the level and press play. And now if we click on our new button, we can now add the tiles if we are clicking outside of the tiles that are already there. And if we go back in select tile, we can now select those tiles if we want to. And then if we don't select anything, well, we are not doing anything. That's exactly what we want. And then we can go back to add tile to add more tiles. Perfect, that's exactly what we want. We can now stop. The next action we're gonna do is actually the simplest and the fastest to do, and it's going to be the action to remove tiles from the grid. And to create the blueprint, I'm simply going to duplicate the blueprint we just created to add the tile. So duplicate this one. I name it the action remove tile and I can open it. Then in my execute action function, I'm just going to select everything and delete everything. And since we don't have a function in the grid to remove tiles yet, I'm just going to go back in there and create a new function. I named the function remove grid tile and I'm passing it an index, which is an int point. And then we simply remove the index from our grid tiles. 
And finally, we are quickly checking if the remove worked. And if it is the case, it means that the index was actually inside the grid tiles and there was a tile there. And if it's true, well, we have to update the visual to remove the tile, which we are simply doing by calling the update tile visual function. For the data of the tile, we are simply passing it the index of the tile. The data type, we are setting it to none because there's no tile there anymore. And since the transform and states don't really matter, we can just leave them empty. And that's it, we can now compile and go back in the remove tile action. And for the logic, it's pretty easy. We simply have to call the new function we just created, passing it the grid index. We can now compile, go back in tab grid to link the new action to the buttons. And here I actually decided to combine both actions on the same button. So I renamed my text on my button to be add slash remove tile instead of just adding a tile. And I've set my right click action to use the new action we just created. That way, if we are doing a left click, we are adding a tile. And if we are doing a right click, we are calling the remove tile, which should remove a tile. And it's now time to test it. I'm gonna compile, go back in entry and press play. And now if I select my new action on the left, if I do left clicks in the air, I should now add some tiles the same way it was doing it before. And if I do a right click instead, now it removes those tiles and I can remove the tiles that I just added. Perfect, that seemed to work perfectly. Good, we can now stop. So now we are at the halfway point, uh, we have two actions created and we still have two actions to create. But before doing that, I'm gonna take a little bit of time to add a little quality of life feature, which is to be able to hold down the mouse button and execute the action multiple times every time we change the tile index that is under the mouse. That way, let's say if you wanna add a row of tiles, you don't have to click on the first tile, go to the next one, click, go to the next one, click, go to the next one, click, again and again and again and again. And instead, you'll be able to simply hold the left mouse button and simply move the mouse across all the tiles and it should add all of them. So let's go do that. I'm gonna go in my BP player action and open it. And here, the first step is to create two new booleans. The first one is to keep track if the left mouse button is down and the second one is to keep track if the right mouse button is down. So I have two new booleans variable right here is left click down and is right click down. And this is how I'm setting them. So when I'm doing a left mouse button, when it's pressed, I'm setting the is left click down to be true. When I'm releasing it, well, I'm setting it to is left click down to false. And I'm doing the same thing for the right click. So when I'm pressing the right mouse button, right click is down true. And when I'm releasing it, uh, well, is right click down equal to false. And here in between uh, both left click and right click, I created a new event, uh, which I named on over tile changed. We're gonna call this event every time we are updating the tile that is under the mouse cursor. So we're gonna call this event. I'm gonna go in my update over tile function and I'm simply calling it here at the end of the function. So when all the code is executed and we are updating the over tile, we are calling the new event we just created. Back in the event graph, uh, when the event is called right here, we are doing a sequence to process both the left click and then the right click. And here from the branch, if the left click is down, we want to execute our action. So we're going to connect it like so. And we're going to do the same thing for the right click. So if right click is down, when it's true, we are executing the action. And that's everything we needed to add here. So I'm just going to compile and go back in the level and press play. Now, if I select my add remove action, I can pass my mouse over a bunch of tiles at the same time while holding the left mouse button to add a bunch of tiles. And I can do the same thing with the right mouse button to remove all the tiles, which makes the experience way smoother. And that's way more enjoyable to add and remove stuff on the grid. Perfect. And actually, I just realized that if I try to add tiles on the ground that is not at the zero level, I mean on ground that is higher than the zero level, it doesn't actually work. It adds the tile under it. So we're just gonna go fix that real quick. So I'm just gonna stop right now. And we're gonna go change two little things. The first one is in BP grid. I'm gonna go in my function and get cursor location on grid. I'm giving myself a little bit more space like so. Then I duplicate the line trace that we did right here and I reconnect it. And then I'm gonna zoom right here and change the trace channel from grid to ground and grid modifiers. That way now, if the mouse is over the ground, it's going to return this location instead of returning the location of the plane that is a zero, zero, zero. 
And the second thing we have to change to fix this issue is in the add tile action. And here, before passing the location to the add grid tile function, we are calling the trace foreground function. That way, it's going to adjust the height of the tiles the same way we did when we are spawning the grid. So it's taking in the mouse location, it's adjusting the height based on the environment, and then adding the tile. Okay, we should now be able to test. I'm going to compile and go play, and now if I try to add some tiles where the ground is a little bit higher, and it works exactly as expected. Perfect. We can now stop again. Okay, we can now go back to the creation of actions. We still have two to do, so let's go do them. So I'm gonna go back in my actions folder and I'm going to duplicate the remove tile this time. I renamed it the action underscore increase decrease tile height because we're gonna use the same action for both and I can open it. First step is to delete everything that's in the execute action. Then we have to check if the index is valid because we don't want to adjust the height of a tile that doesn't exist. And to adjust the height of the tile, we actually need to start by getting the current height of the tile that we want to affect. And then we'll either increase or decrease that value. And that's what I'm doing right here. So from the grid tiles inside my grid, I'm getting the grid of my index and I'm saving it into a structure, which is a local variable that I created right here. And then we just have to call the add grid tile function, passing it all the data that comes from the variable that we just set. That way, the function is just going to update the current tile. But here, since we want to change the location before setting it, we are going to add another vector to it. And actually, since we are only interested by the Z axis, we are going to split the second vector like so. But here, by how much do we want to increase or decrease the height of the tile? Well, we should do it based on the grid tile size. That way, we are making sure that we are keeping the same uniform height between each tiles of the grid. And we can connect it like so. Uh, actually, we can't, because we want to use the same action for both increasing or decreasing the height of the tile. So we have to first check if we want to increase or decrease it. And that's exactly what I'm doing right here. So I'm multiplying by either 1 or minus 1, depending if we want to increase or decrease the height. This boolean right here is a new variable, not a local variable, it's a class variable right here, and I named it increase. And that's it for the actions logic. But we actually need to set the value of increase that we just created, and that's what we're gonna do in our button. So I'm gonna go back in entry and go in my actions folder in my debug menu. And here I'm going to create a new custom button specifically for this action. So right click, user interface, widget blueprint. I named it button underscore action underscore increase decrease tile height and I'm going to open it. I'm gonna start by deleting the canvas panel and then I'm gonna go into my user created widget, get my button action and add it to my widget. I change the text written on my button for increase slash decrease tile height and for both the left click and the right click I set the action action increase decrease tile height. Then in the graph in my event construct, I'm getting the reference to my player actions. Then I'm binding myself to the selected actions changed callback, like so. And now that we just got notified that the selected action changed, we are getting the selected action of the left click and we are casting it to see if it corresponds to the action increasing or decreasing the height of the tiles. And if it is the case, well, we are setting it to true for the increase. That way, when we are doing a left click, it's going to increase the height of the tile. And then we're doing the exact same thing for the right click. So we're getting the action for the right click. We are casting it and then we are setting the increase to be false. That way, when we do a right click, it's going to decrease the height of the tile. So to recap, in the construct, we are binding ourselves to the selected action change callback. That way, we know when the selected action just changed. And then, both in the construct and in the callback, we are checking if the selected action corresponds to the action for increase or decrease the tile height. And if it is the case, we are setting the booleans. But anyway, it's now time to go test this, but first we have to go add the button into the tab grid. In the user created widget, I have the new button we just created, so I'm getting it and dropping it into the vertical box. And I'm adding two of padding the same way I did for all my other buttons. We can now compile back in the level and press play. And now if we select our new action and we hold the left mouse button and over our tiles, we can see that they are going up in the air and the opposite, if we hold the right click instead, they are going down into the ground. 
Perfect, that seems to work as expected. Good, we can now stop. And it's finally time to do the last action I wanted to do in today's video. So I'm gonna go back in my player action of the grid and I'm going to duplicate action increase decrease tile height because it's going to be pretty similar. I renamed it the action underscore set tile type because it's going to be the action that's going to change the type of four tiles on our grid and I'm going to open it. For the function that executed the action, we're gonna keep pretty much everything that's in there. So we're checking if the index is valid, if it is the case, we're saving the data, and then we are updating the data into the grid based on the new information we wanna set. But here we don't wanna set the location, so I'm just gonna delete everything related to the location, and I'm actually going to disconnect the rotation and scale and recombine both transforms. Then we can reconnect the transform and disconnect the data type because this is what we're gonna set. And to decide which type we want to set, we are going to use a variable. So right click and promote to variable, which I named the tile type. And actually we can delete the increase variable because we're not going to use it anymore. So now the action only updates the type of the tile and we're done. So we're going to go create the button. I'm going to go in the level and in my action folder where my buttons are. In here, I will also duplicate the button for the increase decrease tile height. And I named it button underscore action underscore set tile type. And now we can open it. And here I change the text on my button to be set tile type. And I also change the left click and right click action to be set tile type for both of them. And now we need a way to select which tile type we want to set. And for that, we're going to use a combo box. But to be able to add the combo box to the widget, we need to first add a vertical box around the button. So we can right click on it, wrap with vertical box. And here we could simply add the combo box to the vertical box, but instead I might want to use the same style that we already used in our previous combo boxes. So I'm going to go back in tab grid. I'm going to copy the combo box of my environment, go back in the button and paste it in my vertical box. And here what I change is first I rename the combo box. So it's written combo box string underscore tile type. And then I removed the padding so it's perfectly aligned with the button. And I also emptied the default option list. I only added the normal as first option and I also made it the selected option. And then I'm gonna go all the way at the bottom on the right right here and implement the unselection changed event like so even that we can bring closer to the callback and connect it to the sequence like so. That way, when the player changes the tile type that is written in the combo box, we are executing the sequence responsible to pass the information to both actions. And the reason why we have to check if the player actions is valid before executing the sequence, well, it's because we are gonna use the preconstruct to add our options into the combo box. And this event right here is also called when we are adding options to it. So since we are going to add options in the preconstruct, which is executed before the construct, the player action is not going to be set yet. And this is why we have to check and make sure that it is valid before executing the code. And here's how we're going to do it. So in the preconstruct, when the button is created, we are going to clear all the options that are in the combo box. So that way the combo box is completely empty. Then we're going to loop through all the tile types in our enums and add them to the combo box. That way we are making sure that all the elements of our enum is part of the combo box and that even if we are deciding to add 20 of them in the future. And finally, I'm just making sure that the selected index of the combo box by default is the index one, which corresponds to the normal tile type in our enum. And it's now time to pass the option that is selected inside the combo box to our actions. So here what I'm gonna do is delete both casts right here because we're not gonna use the same class. And I'm replacing them to two new cast to the new action we just created. So the action set tile type instead. And if the cast succeeded, we are simply going to set the tile type into the action, which we are doing by using the selected index from our combo box that we then convert to a byte and then pass it to the enum to create the last conversion node. That way, if the user is doing a left click, it's going to set the tile type of our tile based on the information that is in the combo box. And for the right click, we're going to keep it simple. If the user does a right click, we are simply setting it to normal. So the left click is always setting a custom tile type and the right click is setting it back to normal. And the last thing I wanna change in this widget is to make sure that we are hiding the combo box when this option is not selected. Otherwise, we're just gonna have a combo box that's not really useful for us. So we're gonna hide it when we are not selecting this action. 
And that's how I'm doing it. So at the beginning of my sequence, uh, I'm setting uh, the combo box hidden by setting it uh, to collapsed. And then if one of my casts succeeds, we are setting it back to visible right here. Which means that if both casts failed, the combo box is going to remain collapsed. Which is exactly what we want because both selected actions won't be the set tile type. And that's it, we're done. We just have to go back in the tab grid to add the button. And here I'm getting the button that we just created in the user created. I'm adding it to the vertical box and I'm setting a padding of 2. And that's it, we can now compile, go back in the level and press play. And here on the left, if I select my tile type action, we can see that the combo box appears, otherwise it disappears if we have any other type of action selected. And then if we select another type of tile other than normal, so maybe obstacle, and I click on my grid, we can see that the tiles disappear. And this is because the obstacle tiles don't have a grid under them. And then if we hold the right click, we can see that the tiles reappear. So that works as expected. Perfect. We can do the same thing for the none because they act as the same way as the obstacle. So the tile disappear and right click, they reappear. But anyway, that's gonna be it for this video. We created a bunch of actions that we can now use to affect our grid the way we want. So we can increase, decrease the tile or add or remove tiles if we want to. And actually, I think we now have all the building blocks we needed to start working on the pathfinding. So that's gonna make a more interesting video for the next one. But that's gonna be it for today. So I'm gonna see you then. Bye bye.